The hymn is 108, 108. Jesus, the name high over all in hell or earth or sky. Angels and men before it fall and devils fear and fly. 108.
We're going to read God's word in Matthew's gospel. It's in chapter 7, but leaving behind the little passage from verse 1 to verse 12 and coming to verse 13 and reading then to the end of the chapter. So that's Matthew's gospel, chapter 7, and reading at verse 13. Let us hear God's word. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness." Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Well, we're thankful to God for his wonderful word, and we'll come back and make a start on that. We're not going to get very far, but we'll make a start on that anyway. So 218 is the hymn, The Price is Paid. Come, let us enter into all that Jesus died to make our own. 218.
Turn to God then in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, our God in heaven, we are overjoyed to remember the Saviour, to think about that price that he was willing to pay for us, to think of that um, holy, uh, wonderful plan of salvation that existed there in the councils of eternity between the three persons of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all wonderfully in order that the price of our salvation might be dealt with, that the price might be paid. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and the one who came into the world as a, a little babe for us, who bore our humanity, who bore the consequences of our sins, who knew affliction and difficulty and trouble rebuff and was to be dealt with spitefully, to be spat upon, to be rejected and thrust away, to have that cry, crucify, crucify. And his being so perfect and holy and good and righteous. He did all of that. He went to the cross. It was your plan of salvation. It was that which the Spirit upheld him in doing. And we marvel, Heavenly Father, at this wonderful um, transaction of grace and mercy of love and care. And it's our prayer to you that our hearts would daily be lost in wonder, love, and praise. Keep us, Heavenly Father, from ever uh, growing familiar, over-familiar with these truths. Keep us in a place, Heavenly Father, where they're wonderful truths, where they're, they're mighty truths, truths that bear upon our souls and truths that leave us um, beyond words as we ponder all that Jesus did. We ask you that you would bless uh, this wonderful gospel to us again tonight as we consider it. We pray for folk who know it not, people who have never really grasped the gospel. They've never really understood it. And they perhaps have mingled um, amongst the religious and they've perhaps been church goers and they've been there for many a year, but never really found the Saviour. Have dealings with them, we pray, and cause that they may find him. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would receive our thanks and praise for that day that came in our own being when finally the truth dawned. How could we not see it? How could we not grasp it? But wonderfully, the truth dawned. And we give you the thanks and praise that is due to your great and holy name. And we ask you, O oh God, that in the same way the truth might dawn upon hearts. We think especially of our children. We thank you for them, those who are older in years, some here, some perhaps not here at all. And we pray, Lord, for the children that you would pursue them and have dealings with them. We pray for the little ones. We thank you for them. We pray, Lord, for the little fragments of truth that they perhaps take in week by week. And we pray that those fragments of truth, whether here in church or in the children's talk or in Sunday school or whether earlier in the year in children's meeting and so on, we pray that these little fragments of truth may build up within their hearts 
and may leave them undone, may show them that they need the Saviour, the Lord Jesus. Help us to be faithful as we teach them at home. Help us, Lord, to, to live out the gospel and to be held by the truth in such a way they will see this is something so important they will fear, O oh God, to ignore it and to spurn it. We pray that you would be pleased to remember us in a new week. We do ask you for um, Tuesday. We do pray about the fair day. We realise that many, many people will be taken with rides and eats and all sorts of things. But we pray, Lord, that you might bless our efforts as reaching out with these tracks. We pray that there may be something. And we ask you, O oh God, that the gospel would dawn upon hearts. To that end, Lord, we pray about the weather. We, we don't know where it's going to go. And we, we pray, Lord, if it please you to give us a good day on uh, Tuesday or perhaps later in the week as well. We just commit and commend these things to you. Bless the mums and tots on Wednesday morning. And for ladies who come along week by week by week, who are there, they hear perhaps a, a short story, they, they sing the choruses for their children who have grown familiar with these words. We pray, O oh God, that something may happen there. Bless us tomorrow evening as we think about the Holiday Bible Club and give us wisdom, O oh God, to know what to do, we pray. And remember us in all the activities of the week and cause your face to shine upon us. We pray that you would meet the, no the needs, O oh God, of those who um, find themselves with worries and cares and troubles, and we commend them to your blessing and grace. We pray that you would help each and every one of us with, um, needless to say, there'll be new demands this week. There'll be things that we don't expect. There'll be things that uh, perhaps come as a surprise, perhaps come as a shock. But Lord, help us, we pray, that in all things that we may honour you and that we may glorify you. Remember, we pray to the ends of the earth, the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And would it be the case that the earth would be filled with the knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea. That's the promise you've given us. That's the basis of God on which we act. That's why we're happy to cast our bread upon the waters. And we pray, O oh God, that Jesus would reign where'er the sun doth his successive journeys run. Help us then in every need, grant us your blessing, grant for the young ones with exams this week that they may know your help. Keep them, Father, we pray, busy. Keep them with um, enthusiasm. Uh, keep them heavenly, Father, uh, in, in a place where they realize that they need you. Hear our prayer. And bless us now with forgiveness for our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good that you can be there um, this evening and that we can be together. The announcements, well, we've got this meeting tomorrow evening, 8 o'clock, um, probably be upstairs, I think, concerning the Holiday Bible Club. We'll, we'll hope to do that in um, August, but we need to have a little chat about that and so on. So if you can manage that tomorrow evening, probably upstairs, eight o'clock anyway. If you can't be here in church, but you want to be there, and I realize it's not easy for everyone, and we will run it on um, Skype in addition. We have the technology, so we may as well make use of it. On Tuesday, we're hoping to distribute um, tracks. Um, that usually, it's usually sort of around 11 o'clock, 11.15, that you can start to do that. So there's not a lot takes place before that. Um, so if you can come and help on Tuesday morning, or if you want to be there on Tuesday afternoon, or if you want to come on Tuesday evening, 6.45, if we can manage that. I know it's a rush with tea and everything, but if we can manage that, 6.45 on Tuesday evening. It's all very weather dependent. The forecast is kind of it's, um, mixed there. So we'll just have to see how we go. Um, and usually then we have a little time of prayer afterwards here in church. So if we can manage that, on Tuesday evening, that would be good. If you want leaflets, they'll be on, in, on, in, the, in the back there, on, um, in, in the kitchen, just on the kitchen worktop there, they'll, they'll be. So I'll leave them there and take them and use them as you can, please. If we do have to resort to Saturday, well, I'll be out on Saturday, and if you can help with that, that'll be good. Just depends on how, how it goes, but the, the, the tract is about them. It's based on the Mayfair, so they need to go out this week. Um, Wednesday, Mums and Tots at 10.30, 30, 
Thursday, a session meeting, but we haven't finalised the details of that. We'll maybe have a minute afterwards. Sunday, 10.30, the Sunday School and Bible class in the hall morning service at 11.30, evening service at 6, meeting for prayer there at 11.15. I mentioned this morning about senior camp, but I imagine that most people who would be interested in that were there this morning. It is, I'm told, um, on the EPCNI website, and I'm also told that leaflets will come out, but didn't sound as though they'll be out this week anyway so there we are look that one up and the other thing Stephen very kindly has put a, a leaflet to sign up for the barbecue I've got the date in my head now Stephen it's the 10th of June it's in Carnphonic the price is five pounds for adults and 250 for children please sign up for that please do come if you can and please sign up quickly it's a big operation getting everything together it's not an easy business to do that so please help Stephen and make his life easier. Those I think are all the announcements. We're going to sing from the 100th Psalm. The 100th Psalm. Shout to the Lord with joy all who to earth belong. Adore the Lord with joyful hearts and come to him in song. The 100th Psalm. Well, we've been in the Sermon on the Mount now for some time. It is a wonderful sermon. It is about the gospel. I know that folk don't always recognize that, but really it is um, a massive um, comment on repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, which we read back in chapter 4. And it's all about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to walk with God. And we've looked at it in great detail and it bears that for it is a wonderful message we come this evening to verse 13 and it's a key verse it's a very important verse and if you like verse 13 begins for us what we might refer to as the application of this message there's quite a lot to it um, the Lord Jesus has spoken about what it means to be a Christian and now in verse 13, he says, you need to enter. And I think when you see that, you can see how it all, I trust, fits together. And so he's preaching, and now he's going to preach for, if you like, sometimes people talk about preaching for a decision. Well, okay, not terribly fussed, but he is in a sense, isn't he? He's preaching that men, that women might turn to him. Enter, he says, by the narrow gate, for wide is... The gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Now, we're not going to be able to deal with all of that tonight. There's too much there for us. But I do want to say three things. And the three things that I want to say are these. Enter. How compassionate. And we'll think about the Lord Jesus and his concern for men's souls. Enter. How 
careful. What he's talking about here tonight is just so, so important. Enter how crucial. It's so important because this is the difference between eternal life and eternal death. So those three headings tonight, enter how compassionate, enter how careful, enter how crucial. First of all then, enter how compassionate and basic to all that we're going to say here tonight, this evening, is the recognition that the very first word in the sentence in verse 13 is the same in English as it is in the original language. It's the word enter. It's an imperative. It's a command word. And um, here now, the Lord Jesus, having spoken, having described what a Christian looks like and what a Christian doesn't look like, what it means to walk with God and what it doesn't mean to walk with God. And having spelt out in great and vast detail, he now, as it were, comes to the application of that and says, look, you need to enter. I've told you about what it is to be a Christian. I told you of how important it is to know God and so on. But you need to enter. You need to get in. You need to enter. You need to enter through the gate. The word is in the plural. And it calls out, you see, to all who are listening to this wonderful Sermon on the Mount. It's the application. If you like, it's the appeal. It's the appeal. And the Lord Jesus Christ is saying you need to enter. This Sermon on the Mount is a Sermon on the Mount. It's not a lecture. It's not a lecture. You've heard me draw that. A very, I'm not fanatical, but I am very struck on that division. It's a very important division. Um, it's a sermon. It's got a message. There's application. There's an end in it. And here the Lord Jesus Christ says, enter. Enter is the first word of application. The Lord Jesus Christ is saying to you tonight, he's saying to us all tonight, you see, the, the you here is in the plural, so it's everybody here tonight. The Lord Jesus Christ is saying that in your life, in my life, something needs to happen. Now, I don't know, has that happened in your life? The Lord Jesus Christ is saying, that in your life and in my life, something needs to happen. You need to enter. You need to enter. You need to go through the door. Now, I emphasize that because people may have the idea that the Lord Jesus Christ is, you know, um, some sort of gentle, soft character whose only word and requirement was um, some sort of mushy idea of love, that in the softest of sense, senses and, and so, so on. And going with that, the sort of all-inclusive idea that everyone belongs to salvation, that everyone is on their way to heaven. Those sort of things go together, don't they? We recognize, you know, that kind of talk and so on. That there's a, an automatic to heaven, that there's a, a universality to belonging to the kingdom of God. That's precisely what he's not saying. That's precisely what he's not saying. He's not been saying that all the way through this sermon. He's been drawing a division, and he's not saying it now. He's saying, enter. You need to enter. And so, my friend, don't think that, you know, just to come to church or to belong into a Christian family or, um, I don't know, to do whatever it is associated with the Christian gospel has got you there and safe, because it hasn't. It hasn't. You need to enter. The idea is there, but it's not an accurate idea. You need to enter. So let's be clear. The first word in this sentence is the word Enter. There's nothing automatic about this. There's nothing, you know, automatically universal about this. The Lord Jesus is saying to us that if you want to be safe in the gospel, you must enter. Now, I'm going to admit to, you may, you know, hang your head in shame now and wave it from side to side, but I don't mind admitting these things. But I know there's something about, you know, um, 
Is it driving licenses? Is it passports? I don't know. But there's something, isn't there, about that, that unless you tick the right box or whatever it is, you're an organ donor. I'm going to admit to you tonight, I've got no idea, John, whether I'm an organ donor or not. All right? I'm just going to tell you. I don't know whether I'm booked in or booked out. I've got no idea. I've absolutely no idea. And if you want to shake your head, that's okay. I don't mind. All right? I really don't mind. But you see, when it comes to the kingdom of God, you have to enter. You have to go in. There's nothing by default here. There's nothing automatic here. You have to enter. And so let's also be clear that when we think of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's perfect balance in him. You see, he's firm, and we've seen him firm, but he's gracious. He's kind, but he nails his colors to the mass doesn't he and that's what you find throughout the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ he's so gracious in dealing with people he's so tender in the way that he speaks to people he's ready to feed the 5,000 he sees their need he sees that they're hungry they're in trouble Um, he sees those 10 lepers he knows what the outcome is going to be he knows that only one is going to come back he deals with the woman at the well He knows all about that woman. He knows what she's up to. He knows that she's going to lie to him and so on. Try and pull the wool over his eyes. He knows all of that. But he's so wonderfully gracious in dealing with people. But that doesn't mean that he's a walkover. That doesn't mean that at the end of the the day, you know, the Lord Jesus will just wave people in. He's not going to wave people in. He's gone through this long message, the Sermon on the Mount. And he has been so precise and detailed. You say, so precise, Mr. It is. But he's been so precise and detailed in this. And now he comes to apply it and he says, enter. You need to enter. And so don't think that at the end of the day, you know, he'll just wave them in and he'll say, it's okay, it's okay. He's not going to do that. You need to enter. He's gracious, but he's firm. And we need to see that there this evening. Enter how compassionate, but enter how careful, how careful. And so we can think of this wonderful, compassionate Savior tonight. But we need to be very careful to hear and act upon his words. And so, you know, you can have heard the gospel. I'll go further. You can can even be touched by the gospel. You can sense the logic of the gospel. You can even feel the power of the gospel. We've had all that in this room over the years. We've had all that over the years. You can be drawn to the gospel. You can be sympathetic to the gospel. You can even stand up for the gospel. But not actually fully embrace it. We've had all of that in this place over the years. It's the warning, isn't it, of the parable of the sower. You remember those parables that Jesus gave and What seems to be, I'm not going to die arguing for this, but what seems to be the first of the parables would seem to be the parable of the sower. And it was so important to the disciples. So important to the disciples, wasn't it? Because they needed to understand the Lord Jesus was sending them off on a mission they were going to be going and uh, dealing with or seeking to deal with the hearts of men and so on. But they needed to realize that there would be different responses to the gospel. You can respond in different ways to the gospel tonight. And for some people, there would be an out-and-out rejection. And they'd say, no, no, I'm not, not interested in that. And that's the, that's the, that's the, 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 the wayside, isn't it? That's the pathway. 
And the Lord Jesus says, well, Satan is in there and he snatches the word away. And that could be you tonight. There's that group that clearly, the fourth group that Jesus speaks of, clearly these people are Christians. And we're told they produce fruit, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. And it's perfectly clear that these people are genuine Christians. And then there are two groups in the middle. And you say, well, this is a strange parable. This is a difficult parable. This is not an easy parable. But the Lord Jesus is getting his disciples ready. This was not going to be an easy work. And they would meet up with people who would respond positively. They would meet up with people who were in. They were in. They're behind the gospel. But the ground was shallow. And time would tell a different story. Or there were thorn bushes. And time would tell a different story. Now time often does tell a different story. The Lord Jesus Christ, we shouldn't be taken back by that. I mean, it's ridiculous if we're taken back by that. For the Lord Jesus Christ prepared his disciples for that very happening. I do believe it's the first parable. It's certainly you know, um, a, a, a wonderful parable, isn't it? It's a wonderful parable. You see, you genuinely need to enter. It needs to be a real Entry. Now we'll come back and we'll look at this verse again, God willing, next Sunday evening. But you, you need, I just want to labor this word tonight, enter. You need to enter. Now, now where? Where do you need to enter? You're given a task. You know what it is sometimes? You're given a job and could you go and do this? And you're told where you're going to go. And mm. Well, I can recall doing this on um, Friday and I, it, it drew to mind the family will remember the circumstances better than I but I can remember going on holiday once to, to Spain and I think we arrived late and I think we took a wrong turning and then we arrived at this place and it was late on I think it was half 11 at night or something like this and there's a description as to how to enter this property something like that I've got a raised eyebrow I've got it right could we find the entrance John Half an hour, scraping around, you know, end of a long journey, scraping around, trying to find the entrance. Where is the Lord Jesus Christ telling us to enter? Well, it's into salvation. It's into salvation. It's to leave the broad road. Now, I'm going to come back on that. But you can see the language there. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way, the broad road. I'll come back on that. But just for tonight, you see, this is the broad road. This is the way that everybody's going. To come to be a Christian, you have to recognize you're going the wrong way. To come to be a Christian, you have to recognize that you're in, not with the goodies, but with the baddies. It's to enter into salvation. It's to pass through the narrow gate. It's to be found on the narrow road, the path that leads to life. And be perfectly clear, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying here tonight, you need to enter. There needs to be a, a, you know, a, a move here. You need to enter. Come unto me, says the Lord Jesus, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's an invitation, but you need to enter. You need to respond to that invitation. You might say, well, when? When? That's the where. You need to enter into salvation, but when? When, when are we to enter? Is there a right time? Um, you know, is it a case of doors open at? Will the doors be shut? Is there a right time? Is this something for young people? Is this something for old people? Well, the reality is that you can't be too young, nor can you be too old. You can't say, well, I'm too late, and you can't say that I'm too early. Now, a time will come when you will be too late. A time will come. A time may come when you're too old. 
But the time will come when you'll be too late. It's very, very important to enter. And it's important to recognize there's no other way of salvation. It's clear from the word that the Lord Jesus Christ uses here. You need to enter, he says. The word here is in, I'm not going to give you a lecture in Greek tonight, but it's in the air, it's tense. And it's the the idea, you know, it's a command word, and it's really this, enter. It's not be entering. It's not be entering. That would be an entirely different idea here. It's enter, get in there. You need to get in there. And whilst you can't be too old or too young, it's dangerous to put it off. Because you can harden your heart. So a lady spoke to me this week. It was in connection with her child. And she spoke about asthma that she hoped was fading. She hoped that it was fading away. And I guess that if your child is diagnosed with asthma, you're going to hope that, as often is the case, that it does fade as they, you know, go, go up in years Slightly, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But that was her hope, it was going to fade. But the danger with the gospel is that the gospel fades. And it can have power. You can feel its power. You can sense its power. You can know there's something in this. We've had all of that in the place. You can sense its power. But... You resist it and it fades away. It moves away from you. We had the ministers and office bearers conference a few weeks ago and it was based upon the servant songs. The servant songs are um, passages that are found in Isaiah 42, 49, uh, 51 I think, is it? Or 50 and 53, those are the servant songs. And in the midst of one of those um, servant songs in chapter 49 is a verse then that Paul quotes, and it's often quoted in this kind of connection. Um, It's it's quoted there in, in 2 Corinthians and 6. In an acceptable time, I have heard you, and in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation there's a day to enter today is the day because my friend you don't know if you're going to have a tomorrow and you might be sparkly fit and you might say well I'm I'm so young and I'm so fit and I hear what you're saying and I can see the logic of what you're saying but I'm not ready I'm not ready. Now is the acceptable time. And go further, why? Why then? Why are we to enter? The Lord Jesus Christ here is going to speak about a narrow door, and we'll come to that. But why must we enter? Because, you see, we're on the broad road that leads to destruction. Because we're part of humanity because we're part of mankind, because we're part of fallen mankind, because we're going the way that mankind goes, lost in sin. I don't know if you do this, maybe I'm bonkers, but but sometimes I think about my childhood and I have these alarming memories of things that I did wrong. Do you ever have those? Do you have a lot? Maybe not, John. But I have alarming memories of things that I did wrong. I can remember one day being given an ice cream and I wasn't pleased with the ice cream and oh dear, I threw the ice cream. AJ, you didn't hear that? No, he didn't, that's okay. I threw the ice cream, oh dear. Another day, um, I was to go out with friends and we went for a walk with my dad and I didn't know what my dad was doing, busy talking to someone, so I legged it home. Oh, I got in such trouble. Where was I? And I don't know if you remember these things. I do remember some of those things. I do. Dear friend, you and I surely don't need to be taught that we're sinners. Do we? We know that, don't we? 
We're born into Adam's race. We're fallen human beings. We're on that broad road that leads to destruction. We know the theory, but actually, don't you know the practice? Can't you, like me, think of the things you've done over the years? See, we're all sinners. It's part of our fallen human makeup. Enter how compassionate. Enter how careful. But enter how crucial. Because these are crucial, vital words. We're dealing here with an issue of life and death. Folk can hear such a thing, can't they? They, they, they hear the message, well, you either cut alcohol out or you'll be dead. Your liver's on the edge, someone's told, and you either cut alcohol out or you're dead. Their lungs are in a bad way. You, you give the ciggies up, you give the cigarettes up, or you've had it. They're carrying a lot of weight, and they're told, well, you, you're either going to have to diet or there are going to be serious consequences here. And all of those messages come out. This one is not about how life is here. It's about the divide between life and death, but more worrying than that. It's about the divide between eternal life and eternal death. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, and we'll come back and look at this next week, God willing, but the Lord Jesus Christ here is going to tell us that the broad road leads to destruction. Go the way that you're going and you're on your way, he is effectively saying, to a lost eternity. You're on your way to eternal damnation. And you need to turn and you need to enter through the narrow gate. You may argue, you may say, well, I've got, a, I've got years left. I've got years. I'm not even a teenager yet. Or I've not even hit 20 yet. I've got years left in me. You're not old today. At whatever age you want to throw up, I'm not going there. Well, these are urgent words. Enter, says the Lord Jesus. How crucial, how crucial. Dear friend, we'll come back to this, but the Bible makes it perfectly clear. There are just two ways, a broad road that leads to destruction and a narrow path that leads to eternal life. Between the two, there's a door. It's a narrow door. I am the door, says the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll come in and we'll focus. The Lord Jesus Christ is the door. And the message is, you need to enter. You need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to come to a place in your life where you see that actually I'm not the person that I like to think that I am. I'm not the goody two-shoes. That, that's the opinion I want to hold of myself, but it's not true. I'm a sinner in need of salvation. And the only person that can make that difference for me, the only person that can change things, is this person, Jesus Christ. Now, you need to come to that. You need to enter the door. It's not by default. It's not the fallback. Whatever my driving license means for my donor status, I suppose if it happens, John, I won't know about it anyway. So, you know, I'm not going to get too wound up about that. But, you know, whatever my driving license means for my donor status, you see, I'm not automatically on my way to heaven. Not because I've grown up in a Christian family. Not because mom and dad are God-fearing Christians. I need to enter. I need to enter. I need to come to a place where I finally rest and trust in Jesus. Where he's my all and my everything. And without that, you're on the broad road that leads to destruction. And dear Christian friend, how amazing this evening that we who once were blindly walking the road to destruction have had our eyes opened. And we must never 
lose track of that wonderful fact. What a wonderful fact. What a wonderful thing that the Son of God reached down. Remember how he dealt with Paul on that Damascus road? You say, well, my conversion wasn't like Paul on the Damascus road. I know. Okay. But essentially, it's no different. Because either it's a case of once I was blind, but now I see, or you're still blind. We have to come to that place where we've come to rest and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. 474, the hymn, I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest, lay down, you weary one, lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. 470. Gracious God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful tidings of the Lord Jesus and the Saviour who reached down to so many in this room tonight. May he reach down to one and all. May there be salvation, O oh God, in this place. Would there be an entering through the door? Father, we pray that for each and every heart here tonight, we may be careful to realise that we need to enter through the door, trusting in the Lord Jesus, for broad is the road that leads to destruction and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. Hear our prayer. Grant us your blessing as we part for Jesus' sake. Amen. <laughs>